Okay, so this one is the one that's different. This time it is a disproof. We're just trying to show that something is not true. So for disproof by counterexample, well, to prove a statement is true, we need to prove every possible case, potentially infinitely many, a bit like what we did with just looking at the in even numbers and the odd numbers. We only need one example to disprove a statement. And this example is known as the counterexample. So for this one we've got here, it wants us to disprove the statement that n squared minus n plus 41 is prime for all integers. And this one is a really sneaky kind of question, because when you try different values for n, for example, if you try that n is equal to 1, you would get 1 squared minus 1 plus 41, which is 41, and it's prime. And actually, you'll find for a lot of different values here, it is going to be prime. So this one is very sneaky. Now, if you can think carefully about a value that when you subtract it and you add 41 to it, you might get left over with just this. Well, this one is really sneaky. If I try that n is equal to 41, we would get 41 squared minus 41 plus 41, which is just 41 squared. And so 41 squared can't be prime as it has 41 as a factor. So it's a really sneaky one here that um, you could try loads of different values, but until you get to 41, you're not going to find one that is not a prime number. So you're going to need to think smartly about this. We did this in class before my board broke, and we couldn't come up with it for a while until we realized there was a bit of a trick with this one. The other counterexamples, though, are usually a bit easier to do. So here it says it is suggested that for every prime number p, 2p plus 1 is also prime. Prove that this is false. So to show that it is false, all we're going to need is a counterexample. We're going to need to find something. We need to find a p such that 2p plus 1 is not prime. We're trying to find out something that breaks their rule. So maybe you can think of different ones. I know if I try 3, I do 2 times 3 plus 1, that's going to be 7. It's not going to work, but let's try it with p being equal to 7. 2p plus 1 would be equal to 14 plus 1, which is equal to 15, and 15 is not prime. Hence, we have proven this is false. So it can be quite easy for those kinds of things. OK, we are going to have a look at um, another one. This one is going to come back to some of the things I mentioned earlier about irrational numbers. This time it says that if m and n are irrational numbers and m and n are not allowed to be equal to each other, then mn is also irrational. So we're going to try and find one where mn is also rational, because hopefully that is going to, that's going to prove that this is not correct. We're going to disprove this statement. So we need to think of what m and n could be equal to. They're not allowed to be the same as each other but they do need to multiply to something that is rational. So I think someone in my class came up with root 12 and root 3, because then mn would be equal to root 12 times root 3, which is root 36, which is equal to 6. And we should say, and 6 is rational. Hence, statement is disproved. But I thought I'd give some other suggestions. So you could say that m was equal to pi, and you could say that n was equal to 1 over pi. Then mn would be pi times 1 over pi, which is just 1. You could also say that m is equal to root 2, and mn, and n could be equal to 1 over root 2. Then mn would be equal to root 2 times 1 over root 2 which is just going to be 1. So there's loads of different ones that you can come up with. All you need to know is that for irrational numbers, they don't just have to be pi, e, and root 2. They can be all sorts of combinations. They could be 3 pi plus 1. 
They could be 1 over e minus 2. They could be root 2 plus 3 over 7. All of these numbers that I've got here are irrational numbers. So you can be a bit creative with which ones you select. So again, I'm not super keen on these exercises from the textbook here, but I think we can have a go at exercise 7e, question 4 and question 5. But I think you'll be better to have a look at my next video, which is some exam questions on this topic.